That's right, guys. In the video that you're about to see, I'm going to share exactly how this final expense agent made 12 sales in a single day. 100% final expense sales. I know that's crazy, right? Please give the video a thumbs up right now. Subscribe with the notifications turned on. We're putting out new content all the time and we'd hate for you to miss anything. And guys, you're going to love the way I lay this out because I'm going to be going over the type of final expense leads that I work, like how many leads it took to hit those big numbers, how many appointments I schedule out in a, a, a typical day and why you'll be able to break my record by using the system that's just sitting there in place for any and every life insurance agent. All of this and more coming up next. I'm Doug Massey. Thank you for watching our videos and our YouTube channel, Final Expense Trainer. So when I first was recruited into the insurance business, it was to be a captive agent uh, for the Hartford through a friend of mine. So I really, you know, let me just say this. I had no idea how this was going to change my life, um, but it was all mortgage protection. And back then, you would have to buy, oh geez, I think we had to buy 10 leads a week. And the idea was to turn it into three sales. Now, you know, we're talking about 15 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, mortgage protection then was a lot different than it is now. And, and I'm just going to say, if you're being recruited by someone to sell mortgage protection, beware, there aren't really any mortgage protection leads. That's why when the Hartford lost that product, they decided, hey, the lead cost is too much. And we lost the lead program. I ended up searching elsewhere. And I actually did mortgage protection as an independent agent for a little while, I couldn't get the leads. There just weren't any leads. This is over 12 years ago. Now, I mean, the only way you're going to get leads for mortgage protection, unless you're a top producer and you're showing that you're a top producer, that that's what you do. The only way you're going to get them is to get leads that other agents have worked over and over and over. Once I got into final expense sales, my commission levels, I think the first company was like 70%. Um, and what they did was supposedly a free lead program, which later I found out it wasn't free. I, I ended up years later uh, needing a contract from the, that company and they said, well, you owe us $1,200. So it, it wasn't even free. And I didn't know how to do it. It was my first introduction. I got a bunch of leads that were in an area that they had available. And I didn't realize that, you know, of course that area was just horrible. Um, then eventually I ended up getting a company that had a lot of agents that were doing really good. And that excited me, especially because I knew I could do a ride along with a couple of them in Florida. And that was what was offered to me. And my commission level was 90% at that point. So let me just say this guys, if you're new, you're buying leads, you're just getting in the business, your first year commission should be at least a hundred percent with the main products. Um, like agencies, w w the way we do it, if you're committing to leads and you're in the field selling, you're getting at least 110% for most of your contracts, at least the, the main products, I should say. And with that, if you'd like a copy of the guarantees of whole life insurance, this thing I show in every presentation that I make because it shows the difference between whole life insurance and term life insurance. Stick around until the end of this video. I'll show you how to get that. And I'm going to give you one other thing that you're going to need, a medical questions page. This is what I use to ask the medical questions and to even find out really it helps me to figure out which carrier I'm going to use when I make my final expense presentation because it's not only based on health guys. A lot of these people have these like direct express cards or prepaid, prepaid debit cards. Most of the insurance companies aren't going to take them. So the last thing you want to do is price a client out with, I don't know, Mutual of Omaha, for example, only to find out they have a debit card and you're done. Now you got to go back and you got to resell a different product that's probably going to be more expensive and you just made your life harder. So by using the medical questions page correctly, you're going to be able, because at the bottom of the page, there's little notes that you're going to be able to make and you're going to be able to ask the client flat out, you know, hey, Mrs. Jones, you receive social security benefits. You do great. You're going to circle it. 
Uh, awesome. So with Social Security, do they put that money right into your checking account each month? They do. Awesome. Which bank is it? They're going to tell you. They're going to say, boom. The next thing you know, here's where it gets funny. They'll say, oh, it's Direct Express or, oh, it's Green Dot Bank, which are not real banks. They're just debit cards. Stick around to the end of this video. I'll show you how to get both of these guys for yourself. When we first started, I my first place I went, I tried to sell in Dade County and Broward County, two of the hardest places in the world to sell to. The people were just flat out mean. It's like they were trained to get rid of people. You couldn't even get in the front door. And a lot of these places, to make it harder, they would be in gated communities, in condominiums. You couldn't even get you couldn't even get to the front door or here's even better. A lot of the neighborhoods, which are the type of neighborhood that we really want to sell in, they have gates around the house with the warning sign and, and literally locks on the front gate. So you're trespassing if you come in. I was like, man, this isn't working. And so what I did at that point was I had the 90% commission. I, I called the, uh, my upline manager guy and he's like, I've got an agent in, where was the guy? In Daytona Beach. He says, you can ride with him. I'll hook you up with him. So here's the weird thing. What I learned from this guy is what not to do. And I did a second ride along with somebody else we're going to get to in a minute. I learned the same thing, what not to do and what I could do. And that's all I really learned from a ride along. So this first guy, he would go with the lead, knock on the door. All he would do is want to make an appointment to come back. That's all he would do. So he'd come back a second time. He'd make a partial presentation. He'd get all the underwriting information, set up an appointment to come back a third time. Dude, a three call close. Are you kidding me? First thing I learned when I, I just remembered asking someone else for help about it, saying this doesn't seem right. And they were like, dude, that's nuts. You should not be doing a two or three call close. You should be going to the client's house and making the sale then and there. The second guy I rode along with was actually the manager and he really wasn't in the field. So I can't blame him what I saw, but what I saw was basically opportunities to close sales where he just, I felt like he didn't push hard enough. And I can understand that. Let me just say this. I can understand it because back then I was, you know, we would say I was a closer because I didn't take no for an answer. I push, 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 push. Now I'm a little more reserved. Uh, I'm not hungry. I'm not, we have a great life. I don't need the sales. So I don't push very hard. So what I learned from him was that you need to push a lot harder than what I just saw. And he wasn't that good at that point. You know, he'd probably kind of where I'm at now, but, but I'll, uh, I'm sure I'm better than he was. Anyways, that was one thing I learned. The second thing I realized was the area that we were selling in was a lot easier. And that's when the light came on a lot easier than Miami or Fort Lauderdale. I mean, like I said, I couldn't even get in with him. They actually opened the door and let him in. So that was one thing I learned. Basically the big cities, it's going to be so hard to sell final expense. It was for me. I failed. Once we started traveling, that was when things got easier. And so what we actually did was we picked out more rural-ish areas and I did mail drops in those areas. And this is how I learned back then. Um, when I first got into the business, I was doing my own mail drops. I was working with different companies. I didn't want to get this guy's mail, mail his fixed cost mail, because I knew that I was trying to, I just realized that I can't just be stuck working in one area. If I ask for leads in one area and it's terrible, I'm stuck with those leads in that area. So I decided, let me do the mail drops. I'll pay per thousand, which was very smart. We found a bunch of killer areas to sell in and it worked really well. And I'll never forget the first time my wife and I actually went to this one area, which we actually live in. We ended up moving uh, to that area or close to it, I should say. And we, would, we drove two hours to this area and like the first door knock we did, the people opened the door and invited us right in. And it was like, we were, I remember looking at her being like, that's kind of weird. And then the second door knock, the guy actually thought that we were either somebody else or I don't know what he thought. We got out of the car and he, he opens up the door and says, come on in. And just weird. But it was a sign that people are not as guarded in these more rural, rural areas and these smaller towns. So that was like huge for us. We learned you have to travel. That was the key to our business being successful in Florida.
This is what I'm going to ask you to please leave a comment below. I love to hear from you guys and I don't hear from you guys enough. If you love what I'm doing, let me know. If you think I'm full of corn, say it. Hey, call me on my nonsense. If you don't believe what I'm about to tell you is true or works, it's okay. You can disagree with me, but I will tell you, people told us that what we were going to do wasn't going to work. And what we did, trust me, it put us on the map in a big way. And if for some reason you haven't subscribed to our channel, do that now. We're putting out a lot of content, guys, all insurance related. And give this video a thumbs up right now. That way YouTube shares this with somebody else. There could be another new insurance agent that absolutely is starving for something like this. Once we got to the point to where we were selling in those areas and we figured out most of them were good, a couple of them had to be dropped, they weren't as good, but we keyed in on the better areas. What we did, the smart move, was we actually got on a fixed cost lead program. Now, let me just say, over like a three month period, I ended up realizing that 90% commission was just, how do I say this, below what we would call the standard. Um, again, guys, if you're a new agent, your commission level should at least be around 100, 110% to be fair from the start. If you're paying for leads, if you're not paying for leads, you probably shouldn't even be in the business because it's not going to work anyways. But that's how we, we do. That's what we start our agents at. So what I did was I knew I, after doing my mail drops in these areas, my lead cost was a little expensive. It was around 40 to $50 per lead. So I started looking around to figure out a fixed cost lead program, somebody that would sell me per leads. And it was hard. None, no regular companies would do this. I started Googling it and I'm telling you, I did the research around the 15th page. I found this company, this or something I read about this company that was no longer selling the leads to this MLM type of company. This one of the companies that start agents at 60%. Don't get me started on that. Anyways, and they weren't doing it anymore. So I contacted them and I was like, hey, I need leads. I want at least 20, 30 leads a week. I want to increase them at the fixed costs. What can you do for me? They said, we can't even talk to you. <laughs> so the problem was they want a $30,000 deposit. They only deal with, you know, big insurance agencies, agents marketing, IMOs, insurance marketing organizations. So what I did was I started calling these companies. And meanwhile, I'd already spoken to a couple because I had a couple contracts um, with this one company. I had one contract with a second, but I started calling these guys and they're all going, no, no, we're not interested in something like that. I'm like, I'm telling you, this is a game changer. You can give your agents leads at a fixed cost. This is what you've been looking for and you don't even realize it. And I had to sell it to these guys. Finally, I found one guy that I had one contract with to make a long story short. This guy said, wow, I love it. He believed in me. He went with it. He actually, by doing this, I brought so much value to him. He was so impressed that I could find something like this and was interested in doing something like this. And I told him, look, I told him I could come up with a few thousand dollars, maybe, but I can't do anything like, you know, $30,000. He actually made me a partner. And to this day, that is why we have United Final Expense Services and we're able to offer our age, our agents leads at a fixed cost, Medicare, uh, final expense, you name it. We have even have regular life insurance leads available. So it put me on the map in that way and put me in the position to do exactly what I wanted to do, which, and this was the goal, was to increase leads and get a guaranteed cost. So now I got a guaranteed cost. I'm paying less per lead. We want more. We want more. So what we did over the next couple of months is we just kept increasing our leads. Now, let me just say this. At this point, I was door knocking the leads. I don't think I was really calling them for, during the first maybe four or five months unless I really couldn't get a hold of the client and I'd left them like a delivery notice on their door and finally just started leaving messages. So that's how that was. But eventually, about five, six months into it, I did start calling to set appointments for myself. My wife was selling too, so I was calling to set appointments for her. Eventually, she started calling, got comfortable enough to start calling to set her own appointments. While I was doing this, I said, shoot, I've got this unlimited amount of lead opportunity. I can make more sales if I have an assistant, someone to help me. 
we started looking for someone to help us, an assistant. Really, what I looked for then was an appointment setter, which was the wrong thinking. The assistant is the way to go. So appointment setter, ran through a few, finally found our girl. She's been with us for about eight years now, and our lives changed. I went from averaging 15000 in annualized premium a month, just door knocking the leads, which was okay. It wasn't like top producer level. We've actually got agents doing over 20000 just door knocking now. But it was pretty good. And by increasing the leads, I averaged in 2014, between January and December, our, uh, the entire calendar, lead, lead, calendar year, I averaged over 35000 in annualized premium of sales every single month. 100% final expense sales. And to do that, we were working a lot of leads. My wife was going out more part-time-ish as I was going out full-time. We're traveling. I'm, I'm dri driving to areas two, three hours away. I'd stay a night in a hotel. Basically, my system, what I would do when I'd stay a night in a hotel, I'd work a full day and then a half day and then come home. By that time, I'd be burnt out. Why? Because I was running 12 to 14 appointments in a day. That is how I did it. And you're going, Doug, you're full of it. You're ready to make the comment. You don't know what you're talking about. That's impossible. Trust me, when I first started doing that, I was told that I, my goals would be impossible, that I'd be spending way too much on leads, spending way too much on an appointment setter. At the end of the day, we ended up doing very, very well. And now, you know, we live the American dream. You know, we've got a beautiful home. We moved to an area that we really loved. And basically what I do is work when we need to work. I work with all of our agents and shoot after this, I'm going in the pool. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I wear my swimming shorts. That's what I'm wearing. You just figured it out. Yeah, that's what I'm wearing during all the videos. So the appointment setter worked out finally after we ran through a few and we actually, she's actually more family to us now, but so I'm running 12 to 14 appointments with no time between. And let me explain to you why. So I would set up the appointments for 30 minutes and then another 30 minutes in the same. So in one hour, I would set two appointments. And I do that basically for like four or five appointments. Then I'd give a 30 minute break and then do another four or five appointments and do a 30 minute break. Well, how is this possible? Because guys, a lot of people, are, you're gonna get stood up, okay? There's people that I, by this time I knew what I was doing. So you get stood up, one, Two, you, you meet with people that are just rude and will chase you away. And three, a lot of times what happens when you're selling a product and you're good at it and you're selling it over and over, you start to sense when you are spending time with someone you could potentially close or that is more likely just wasting everybody's time. So with that being said, it was possible to do 12 to 14 appointments in a single day. And yes, believe it or not, I would go and run 12 to 14 appointments and there were days when I would come back with zero sales. All part of the business, guys. And let me just offer another giveaway. If you don't have money for leads for some reason, which is really the worst way to start in our business, you know, I believe that if you can't figure out a way to come up with a couple thousand dollars for leads, then you're probably not gonna be able to figure out a way to be super successful. It really, the math is really there for the common sense. However, if you'd like a copy of my targeted door knocking script, and the reason we call it targeted is because you don't have to have a lead to use this script. It works really well, and it's based on basically the fact that a lot of our target people, our target seniors that we sell to, have mailed in these direct mail cards over and over and over. So they've seen them. So when you go to their front door and say, hey, I know you filled out a card that looks just like this, or, you, you, or for some reason you didn't fill out our card, they may say, yeah, I filled them out before. But if you use this script, you will get into some houses, you will make some sales. Stick around to the end of this video and I'll show you how to get a copy of this bad boy for yourself. And if you're thinking I'm full of corn on how I made 12 sales in one day, if you do the math and you're doing 12 to 14 um, sits, and sometimes I would, it's, it would seem like they would all be there, of course, it doesn't matter if you go an hour early or an hour late to most of these folks. So let me just say this. But if you do the math, if you're having that many sits, you're gonna have days where you do good. I had a lot of days where I would do eight and 10 sales, a lot of those. So, and this is the messed up part. So I had a, a guy that was just a super talented insurance agent and he was going to college 
and he was going to school to become a fireman while he was doing this part-time. He came out and rode with me and like two weeks later, he beat my record. He did 14 applications in one day. Unbelievable. So look, this isn't just me that's doing it. When you're running a lot of leads and you're getting a lot of set appointments, if you're doing it right, you won't even have time to door knock in between. Most of us, it's, it is normal. You'll get some five or six appointments in a day, even if you've got a lot of leads, and you'll have time to do door knocking leads in between those appointments. And you're gonna make more sales doing that anyways. How about a pro tip? Do what the next gal or guy will not do. One, look, most people aren't gonna spend a lot of money on leads. They're afraid to. They just don't trust themselves. Put faith in yourself. Run your own business. Push yourself to the limit. Step outside of yourself and do what the guy next to you won't do. Do what your cousin won't do. Do what your brother won't do. Do what your neighbors won't do. Work harder, do more. When we first got in the business, there were times when uh, the people that we had leads would contact me and say, hey Doug, we've got like 40 leads in this area. And what I would do is get together with a couple of agents in those areas and travel outside of the state to sell in those areas. Uh, we did Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, South Carolina, and Georgia. And the one thing I learned, and this was kind of crazy, those states, the sales that, that I closed there, the amount of business that I did there during those trips was easier to do than the clients that I sell in Florida. So if you're an agent working in those states, you should be able to easily kick my butt. Georgia's hard. There's a lead issue in Georgia. The returns on mail are super expensive. So like with us, our agents, the only way we can get most of our agents direct mail leads at a fixed cost is if they're selling Medicare with us. And let me tell you guys, we've got a killer Medicare Advantage sales system. We teach you, we train you intensive training. You can even get into a car with a top producer we give you three lead credits for every single sale you make too. So you're not getting that anywhere else because we're giving you the full commissions, full renewals, lifetime renewals. I love this product. And not to get off track, which I did a little bit, but yeah, look, you have to do what the next guy or gal won't do. It really is that simple. Most people aren't gonna work 80 hours a week, but if you have your own insurance business, if you have that insurance license, that money printing machine, you work when you want to work. You put in as much time and effort into the business and you'll find success is gonna come easier when you put more time and more effort than these guys. Guys, for a copy of the medical questions page and the guarantees of whole life insurance and what was the other thing? Oh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the script for door knocking targeted leads, the targeted lead script, just email me at doug at ufesonline.com. For more information on joining our sales team, being an independent agent, getting top contracts, access to the right leads and the best training, we'll get you in a car with a really good producer, just shoot me an email at that same address. Remember guys, when you put the needs of your clients first, pretty much everything else will usually fall right into place. So get on out there and do something good for someone today. Happy hunting.